Welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka. You are with me, Anupama, and Dr. Dina Sadik, who is also known as Dr. D. <laughs> so we've been talking about the 4D motivation and uh, the co whole concept behind it. Now, since the viewers might have no, not uh, a single idea what 4D motivation motivation is about, why don't you elaborate? It? Mm -hmm. So to understand the 4D model of success, we have to first understand what is the 3D. Okay. Three Ds of interpersonal relationships. Now, to to kind of make it more tangible, let's just do. If you do this, right? Okay. These are three different dimensions. Mm. Now, the thumb represents everyone that's above you okay. in authority, like your parents, teachers, your boss, mm. and your seniors, okay. right? The index finger represents everyone that's at the same level as you, friends, colleagues, and you know people that you work with, right. with whom you have to build. Uh, you know, like teams and have right. the teamwork and stuff. Okay. And the last but not least are people who are like looking up to you, like yeah, junior. juniors, yeah. everyone junior to you and your employees, mm. students and so forth. Now, if you take these three dimensions, everyone in our life falls within these three. Yes. Now, enough books and seminars have been written on these three. For example, how to impress your boss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how to get in the good books yeah, of yeah, your boss. Yeah. and. And then there's been books written about how to have the best maximum team effort. Mm. Or oh, how to have good friends. How to have good friends. <laughs> how to handle your competitors yes. in the same level. And the last is how the bosses and the people at the higher level can get the maximum out of those who are below them yeah. in authority. Yeah. But something has been missing, Anupama, because what happens is that uh, companies keep investing on trainers and so many programs. But every single time they do that, after a while, when the motivation kind of, you know, so dies okay, out, yeah. you know, a couple of big people go back to their same routine. Mm. So something has been missing, which is why that I knew that these three dimensions are missing something, which is what gives birth to the fourth, fourth D. dimension, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the yes. 4D, yeah. which is the relationship you have with yourself. Which right? also matches your name. I just kind of figured it out. <laughs> Dr. D, 4D. <laughs> It's kind of funny, but yeah, cool factor of the day. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so the fourth dimension is, you could say, the very heartbeat of the hand, right. the soul of the hand itself, which is the foundation. Now, another way of looking at it is an iceberg, right? And from the top, you can only see the surface. So the three dimensions, as in all the relationships you have in your life, are just the tip of the iceberg. Wow. The very foundation is the relationship you have with yourself. That whole thing? The whole thing. Wait, wait, you're, you're, you're saying that the entire 3D can comprise into that tip of the iceberg? Tip of the iceberg. Wow, okay, interesting. Tip of the iceberg. Okay. Because, for example, let's take respect. All right. Right? You're, you are expected to respect your seniors, your juniors, and your colleagues, right? How can you understand even how to do that until and unless you respect your own self? Hmm. Interesting. So it begins okay. with yourself. Right, okay. So okay. When, you, when you've learned what it feels like to respect yourself, then you're not going to be disrespectful towards others mm. because you know what that already feels like. Mm. The same goes out with kindness, mm. right? How can you be kind towards others when you're not kind, kind towards to yourself? yourself. Yeah. So the 4D is the foundation of all relationships you have outside of you and be it at home, at work, at school, wherever it may be. Um, all your relationships depend on the relationship you have with yourself. So that's the 4D in a nutshell. That's amazing. So basically, wherever you go, you try to um, impose the 4D factor on people. And, and I know that you work with a lot of corporate um, mm -hmm. uh, crowd as well, a lot of individuals in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And everywhere else you're working with, uh, you're working towards empowering women. But mm -hmm. let's stick to um, where you train. What kind of people do you train uh, currently? Well, it ranges from students to the corporate sector to women working and non-working. Okay. Because... Um, as cliched as it may sound, it is true <laughs> that the 4D actually is applicable to anyone. Okay. Because whether you work or not, it's important to develop and refine your relationship with yourself. If you take the students, for example, their performance at school depends on whether or not they have understood themselves. 
Mm -hmm. And if you take the workforce, how you get along with your colleagues and how you can build a relationship which is healthy with your boss or your juniors also depends on how you treat yourself, mm -hmm. like how I explained. Right. So it ranges from students to teachers. I've, I've spoken to teachers, I've spoken to students, then the workforce to doctors, to medical students and to women both working and non-working as well. So self-love is important. Self-love is important. It's, it's quite ironic that I'm talking to you about self-love because I watched a movie um, a couple of uh, days ago and it says the same thing that if you actually do not love yourself, mm -hmm. uh, the moral of the story was, if you don't love yourself, if you don't feel good about yourself, you can't make another person feel good about herself or himself. Yes. Uh, you can't basically have a healthy relationship within your family or within your friends group or in at office mm -hmm. or maybe in university or even a random person who is walking on the street. You can't really smile at anybody's strange if you are not feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. So that actually um, you know strike the chord in my, uh, in my mind. And the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is that now you said that you work with a lot of people from different age groups ranging from students to teachers to businessmen to do you work with politicians? I <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave that question later but still <laughs> no, it must be interesting if you actually get a chance to work with a politician but what I wanted to ask you is that um, do you think when you start early in your life to um, apply the 4D concept into your life, do you think it's actually better than keeping it for the latter part of your life? Well, I would say the earlier the better. Okay. Because once I was uh, training a group of junior cricketers and they were around the age of 12. Mm. And they were one of the most interesting audience that I've had, you know, like had their like 12 year olds, yeah. 14 year olds. And they were so engrossed and they were so interested. and. Uh, what's amazing is that they had some of the best questions, you know, some of them wanted to know how they can organize their time. Nice. And how they can like, what time they're supposed to get up and sleep and they wanted to implement the 4D. So it was interesting and on the other hand, I've had certain senior gentlemen uh, in the corporate sector who have said they wish they heard about the 4D 30 years earlier. ago. Earlier, <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. So that, that's the same thing that I was asking. So yeah, the earlier the better, like yes. you said. Um, does it actually relate to your profession in uh, medicine as well? Absolutely. Okay. How because like I explained, even in the psychiatry ward when I had <laughs> that realization, most people, uh, if you take non-communicable diseases. It's called NCDs. Yeah. Now these are the diseases that are due to our lifestyle and they include obesity, heart diseases, cancer yeah. and so forth. And these are due to your lifestyle and it's not necessarily due to infectious diseases, you know, like the other side of yeah. the spectrum. Yeah. Now these are caused due to your lifestyle and if you can understand the 4D and begin to improve yourself and begin to refine yourself and have that balance, mm. then you're going to be at a preventive level. Right. Which is why that I ask myself, who is going to be taking care of all those so-called normal people <laughs> yeah. who aren't living their life to yeah. the fullest? Who are in the zero level, like you said. Yes, yeah, okay. the neutral zone. Right. So, cool. That's interesting. Um, the next question that I want to ask you is now, you have been training people in public speaking as well. Mm -hmm. do, you, uh, do you actually take uh, the 4D concept in that area and what kind of training programs do you um, handle yeah. so far? I do because the thing is uh, on Infoma what happened is I had the original 4D that I go and talk about and then after a while it started to um, ramify into branches okay. <laughs> and now we have themes. Right. Now I had to come up with themes because certain people, certain companies were like, okay, can we have a version for stress? Can we have a 4D version for public speaking? And then there was fitness and, uh, and then there was also career guidance. And there's also a sales version for the corporate sector. Okay. So what I do now is take the 4D as a concept and I add certain other different uh, aspects to it. And this is like the foundation of the training. And we can always custom design it to suit the audience. Right. As for public speaking again, in fact, even a few days ago, I had a public speaking session exclusively for women. Okay. Because uh, of all ages. Uh, of all ages, okay. yes, but exclusively for women, strictly. <laughs> <laughs> because so often they're very, um, they're very shy, or they're very, they have a stage fright, and they don't feel like speaking in front of guys when they're new to the stage. So I want to let them have a forum where they can be completely comfortable and be able to, you know, get that kind of training. Yeah. Because to be honest, uh, most trainings happen within the corporate sector, mm -hmm. and some people are not. Um, 
open to it. You know, know open to it. Yeah, yes, yeah. they don't have it. Those who are not working in yeah, true, true. such corporations, they don't have that kind of training. So what I do is once in a while I have a few sessions where it's open to the public and anybody can just walk in and, you know, get an opportunity to get that kind of training. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, you are into empowering women as well. Mm -hmm. You're an advocate in it. So how did that happen? Because I know that you work with uh, a range of people, like mm -hmm. you told us before. So how, why did you focus on empowering women? Well, um, what's interesting is that when I was uh, in my teens, like say towards 18 or 19, I had a very interesting um, talk. It was by a Canadian scholar and he said one of the most interesting lines, I'll never forget. Okay. He said, women are half of society and you give birth to the other half. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he said, that is so true. <laughs> okay, that's just kind of mind-boggling right now. Wow, that's really, really cool. Let me settle it down my mind now. <laughs> I'm sure the audience trying to handle the whole impact of it as well. He, said, so he said, you're half of society and you give birth to the other half. So you are all of society. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing so this is why women should be empowered yes all right so which is why like even with the thing is this for me it's not about just empowering career women because whether a woman chooses to work or not is completely her right and her freedom if she wants to be a homemaker and wants to be a stay-at-home mom it's her choice but regardless of whether you work or not you need to have access to this kind of training where you can improve yourself and refine yourself and focus on your passion hmm. because when it comes to your passions right it doesn't have to be something as mainstream as just medicine engineering and the corporate world it can be the creative side something even as simple as embroidery yeah something yeah. as simple as handwork you know handicraft a woman can or cooking yeah. exactly the culinary <laughs> arts you can you can actually take it to a whole different level and mm. become an entrepreneur in that field so what I tell people is the first and foremost thing in order to find your fulfillment is to find your passion and that's something that I really give uh, quite a bulk of the time in the training and I tell you how you can find your passion because so often people are like you know <laughs> find your passion and go follow it but they don't tell you really how yeah so I, I talk about how you can find your passion as well because it's it's so important since uh, it's it's the mothers who are the foundation at home for the children. That's true. So if they're not positive and if they're not, you know, self-motivated themselves, and then that's going to rub off on the children at some point. So once so again, it falls into self-love again. It you know, falls you into self-love. You don't love yourself, you can't love your child. Exactly. <laughs> well, that, that, that's very interesting. I'm sure you've worked with many mothers and people who've uh, been discouraged in many factors, even in Pakistan. From mm -hmm. Maybe you've speak uh, spoken to people from around the world who've mm -hmm. been uh, facing very traumatic situations, uh, especially people from third world countries, you know, mm -hmm. developing countries, even people from developed countries. I'm yes. sure you've, in, during your research, you've uh, spoken to uh, most of those women who've been through really bad experiences mm -hmm. in life and comparative to men I think women are sort of submissive to a lot of danger they're prone to a lot of danger mm -hmm. mentally physically I mean practically in mm -hmm. life as well so what do you think is is the most important factor that a woman might a woman has to tell herself in order to be motivated mm -hmm. um, Disregarding the fact that whether she's old or young, you know, disregarding age or community or country or culture, what is the main thing in your opinion that mm -hmm. a woman must tell herself every day in order to keep herself motivated? All right. So I think there's two parts to this. Okay. Um, for, okay. For me, before I get to that, I'll just give a background of how I arrived at sure, this sure, answer. Sure. Um, after I came back to Sri Lanka, I told you that I took the research online. And at one point, what happened is I started posting very global issues that women have, like women being oppressed and domestic issues, and certain girls not allowed to pursue their higher education simply because they are born women, yeah. just because you're a female. True, yeah. So when I took these topics online, what happened is people from around the world, women from around the world, including men as well, they started to gravitate towards the forum. Mm. And at that point, you know, it, it became a public forum. And then that's what led me to creating the fan page as well, because so many of them were like, it needs to be public yeah, so that true. anybody could walk in or walk out yeah, yeah. whenever they feel like it. So what I noticed through that, Anupama, is that you know, regardless where you're from, or what, what labels you have, women all over the world have two things that they seek. And one is acceptance. We all want to be accepted. Of course. We yeah. want to be an equal citizen with yes. basic human rights and also respect. 
I was just about to say that. <laughs> See, I'm good at this. <laughs> I was just about to say the next one, respect. <laughs> yeah, that's so, so true. If, uh, that's so true. the answer to your question, I would say it all begins with respect. And there can't be respect without love, self-love. Of and course, of course. Yeah. And there yeah. can't be self-love without self-acceptance. <laughs> that is so true. So it's like a whole cycle yeah. that's, you know, related to one another. Yeah. So yeah. women should definitely begin with respecting themselves because until and unless you respect yourself, you wouldn't even believe that your opinion counts. Yeah. So it does begin with respect. And you believe that your opinion counts when you accept yourself for who you are. Exactly. I think that's, that's a very, very important factor that you said. Okay. Well, um, inspirational talk after inspirational talk. We have to move on to a commercial break right now, but we'll be back with more of Dr. Dina Sadeh.